Hi hey everybody. Um, I, I'm just going to try and quickly make a video. Normally, um, I don't do small. I'm a man of a lot of words. Um, but let's get started. I'm going to read off my screen uh, because that makes it easier for me. Eli Eli Lama Sabachtani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is the translation correct? Short answer for those who don't want to watch this video further. No, most likely not. Uh, but I still hope you would watch this video till the end. <clears throat> in Matthew 27, 45, it says, From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This last sentence was added by translators. When the text was written, a translation was not really necessary because everyone probably understood the words. Now, some interesting things to know before we are going to dig deeper in this topic. Luther used the Greek source text of Erasmus for his translation of the New Testament. Erasmus published the New Testament in Greek in 1516 and also made a Latin translation of the Greek text. We know that Jesus spoke not only Hebrew but also Syriac Aramaic, which was, the, which was the common language in the region at the time. And uh, Some parts of the Old Testament were written in Aramaic, including parts of Daniel, Ezra, uh, Genesis and Jeremiah, but also the Babylonian Talmud was uh, written in Aramaic. And there are many variants and dialects in Aramaic, just as many people in the world speak English, uh, but in different regions we have different accents. Uh, modern Hebrew also contains many uh, Aramaic words and expressions. It is safe to assume that the words in Matthew 27, 46 are written in Aramaic. The Bible references that Erasmus linked to these words refer to Psalms uh, 22, which is generally accepted a psalm that is messianic in nature, uh, and Luther adopted this reference. And Psalm 21, 22 uh, verse 1 says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in Hebrew, this text uh, sounds like Eli Eli lama azaftani. We find that Luther, in his uh, complete translation in 1545, adapted the text of uh, uh, Matthew 27 to Eli Eli lama azaptani instead of Eli Eli lama azaf sabachtani. We also see this in his translation of the same words in Mark 1534. Erasmus did it before him in his Latin translation, and in Matthew 27 he put up Eli Eli Lama Azaptani, but in Mark 14.34 he says Eloi Eloi Lama Sabatani. The original text probably reads in Greek as follows, and I'm not going to go there because my Greek is non-existent, but in transcription it says Eli Eli Lema Sabaktani. And the translator changed the transcription of the Aramaic form of my God, Elahi, to the Hebrew version thereof, Eli. It is also possible to interpret Eli as a Hebraizing variant of Aramaic. But have you noticed anything yet? Two different words are being used. On one hand, we have Azaftani or Azaptani. On the other hand, the oldest manuscripts use uh, Sabachtani. Azaftani, as it appears in Psalms uh, 22, is the Hebrew word for forsaken, let go, abandoned. But we come to a potential problem. If Jesus were to say these words in Aramaic, it would sound like Elahi Elahi Lemana Tatani. Tatani is the Aramaic word for uh, forsaken. But it is not what is written in the text. The text clearly says Sabachtani. 
There is a theory that Sabachthani could possibly be derived from the Aramaic root word Shabak, which does mean forsake or abandon for a purpose. However, it is much more likely that it comes from the root word Shvak, which means to save, to spare, to allow or to fulfill a purpose. So the sentence Elahi Elahi Lemana Sabachthani is most likely translated as my God, my God, you have saved me for this hour or you have fulfilled your purpose for me in this hour. And this assertion is not just a theory, as it is already recorded in the Peshitta, the Aramaic translation of the Bible, for centuries. And I'm going to uh, drop some photos here of uh, the Lamza translation, that's uh, the Aramaic original text, or the version of uh, Paul Yunan uh, interlinear uh, Peshitta translation. And I have to say that in the context of Jesus' life, this makes much more sense than why have you forsaken me? And this is the reason that I'm researching the meaning of these words. I've always found it difficult to accept the traditional interpretation of forsakenness. Why would God forsake Jesus? in the most difficult moment of his life. The explanation often given, and this is probably the moment to hear some soft violin music, when the pastor or the teacher or whomever is sharing it, explains that Jesus bore the sins of the world and God could not and would not be in his presence. And this may sound good in some weird way, but it seems very unlikely um, for the following reasons. Jesus' his earthly life was a reflection of how God stood identified with humanity. And in John 14, 9, Jesus specifically says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. In John 10, 30, it says, I and the Father are one. If we see that Jesus often associated with sinners and also received a lot of criticism from the religious leaders uh, for it, then I think we know enough. Furthermore, Jesus has uh, had indicated many times that God would not abandon him, uh, not even in his most difficult hour or moment. We can assume that crucifixion qualifies as most difficult hour or moment. This is particularly evident in the following text, in John 8, 28. Then Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please Him. The when you have lifted up the Son of Man is likely a reference to the lifting up of Jesus on the cross. Another reason to assume this is the statement of a, of a Roman centurion at the time of the crucifixion. In Matthew 27, 54 it says, When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. The following passage also is a reference to not being alone. In John 16, 32, it says, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. God would not abandon Jesus, not even at the last moment. Jesus was kept for that moment. This may be taken quite literally as his opponents repeatedly tried to kill him. In John 8, 59 it says, At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself slipping away from the temple grounds. And in Luke 4, 29 it says, They got up, drove him out of town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his own way. John 7 verse 1 says, After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. 
He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. The keeping is particularly clear in John 7.30. At this they tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Jesus could have been killed so many times, but it could not happen at any random place or time. He was destined to be crucified. Jesus was saved until the end to achieve his purpose. So it was not a moment of despair when Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. It was a moment of victory. And he underlined this by saying, it is finished, as recorded in John 19.30. This video is not intended to question the authority or accuracy of the Bible. Its main point is to highlight errors that have crept in during translations. The essence is and has always been the crucified and risen Jesus. We should never lose sight of that. However, some people quickly make minor issues into major issues and build their entire theology on them. Anyone who dares to say something else is quickly labeled as a heretic or heresy. That cannot be the intention. But these de details, often small hidden gems, deserve attention, in my opinion. In conclusion, there are still some thoughts, useful additions, and interesting references that I would like to share for the sake of completeness. There is a claim that Jesus may have spoken Hebrew and pronounced the word zebach, which would mean to sacrifice. He could therefore have said, my God, my God, why have you sacrificed me? This is a very vague theory because Jesus knew the answer to this question very well. There are a few more theories about these specific words uh, on the cross, uh, but some make even less sense uh, than others. Another thing is that many religious Jews begin their day with the Modeani, I give thanks prayer, which expresses the believer's gratitude to the heavenly king for returning his or her soul to him. The assumption here is that the previous evening, the believer entrusted their spirit to God for safekeeping. At the end of the evening prayer, they use the phrase, into your hand I entrust, command my spirit. That's in Psalms 31, verse 5. These were also the last words of Jesus. In Luke uh, 23, verse 46, he says, uh, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he has said this, he breathed his last. Jesus was likely no exception to this. I can't imagine more appropriate words that Jesus would have used when he ended his earthly life than uh, those with which he has ended each earthly day before. I know that Luke uh, clearly states that he spoke these words at 3 p.m., that is, the ninth hour, which, as Luke tells us elsewhere, was the hour of the Jewish uh, evening sacrifice. My God, you have kept me for this hour, for this hour you have created me, is also a well-known expression to this day uh, amongst Assyrians when they face struggles and opposition. Instead of complaining and being dissatisfied, they leave it to God. It is God's will to get through such situations. One other reason why people refer, refer to Psalm uh, 22 is because of verse 16. It says, I am thirsty. And on the cross, Jesus also said, I am thirsty. But perhaps Jesus was just really thirsty and he wasn't quoting Psalms 22. I don't know. And uh, last, it is finished which is a translation of the Greek word, and I hope I can pronounce it well, tetelestai. And tetelestai is a conjugation of teleo. 
And that can also be translated as the goal is achieved. Now, uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Carl. I'm from Belgium. That immediately explains uh, the bad pronunciation. My apologies. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to do better next time. Um, one of my many passions is deep sea diving in, in scripture, searching for answers and often logical explanations for often apparent contradictions and confusions. And maybe in the future I will make more of these kind of videos. Uh, I will see if I can try to uh, add my sources uh, to this video, uh, the sources that I used to, to write this article. Um, I used mainly the NIV for uh, the scripture that I quoted. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to share uh, this with you guys uh, the evening before Good Friday. Um, and I wish you all uh, a good Pesach. Bye-bye.